This is a full and complete workout focusing on your legs. We're going to go through some warm up exercises and then a really nice cool down and stretch. Start in plank position either on your feet or on your knees and then tap the opposite shoulder. This is really nice and simple. It shouldn't be too hard as we're still warming up. So this is about warming up your shoulder girdle, your core. I challenge you to start on your feet and if things start to get too wobbly or shaky or you're feeling like your arms are gonna leave you and you need to collapse, then simply bend your knees and get back onto the ground with your knees. So this is called then a drop set where we're starting with a little bit of a higher load and then we're reducing the load so we can do the full 45 seconds. Simply tapping the opposite shoulder, keep the shoulders away from the ears and that's it. Well done, get up, let's do some squats, warming up your glutes, your calves, your hips. And so we're gonna start by bending the knees 90 degrees and then lifting up into standing, but not just standing, but lifting onto the toes or the balls of the feet. When you squat down, bring the arms forward. When you're lifting onto your toes, you wanna to bring those arms back. Now imagine that you wanna jump as this is not just a warm up, but also a preparation for the squat jumps that are going to be coming in the workout section of this very same video. So make sure you go really low when you go into your squats. You can go as low as you can or want. 90 degrees would be ideal, so the hips on knee level. And then come onto the balls of your feet. If you feel like jumping, you can do it already. Woo, time's up, well done. All right. Grab a mat, if you don't have one, pause the video quickly and then continue with bird dogs. We're gonna stand in all fours position, then lift diagon diagonally, right arm, left leg, then crunch them in the middle together as if you would want to curl. This is like a reverse crunch, really rounding your back, pulling the head in, bringing knee and elbow together and then open back up into that extension so you want to go lifting diagonally crunching in the middle lifting the same side again and then putting all back down onto the floor and then change extending crunch extending back on the ground change extending crunch warming up the core and the back and change well done a little bit of rotation after the contract and release. So start in a very wide squat, challenge, hips knee height, and bring those arms onto your knees and rotate your upper body. You wanna look over your shoulder as to twist the whole spine, and you can curl or arch your lower back slightly, so you're lifting your sitting bones, you're creating a little bit of an arch to make the spine longer and more elongated so we can twist better the longer the spine the better we can rotate and twist now try to release those shoulders don't contract them too much you want to actually be pushing down into your knee with those hands in order to pull you around to the side very nice a little more of crunching in the air plank to v pose to so get into a plank pose and from here, we're pushing those hips back up into downward facing dog. You're lifting your sitting bones and then rolling forward as like a wave crushing onto the ocean. And the last thing coming forward is your head and extend your head through the crown of your head forward, really long neck and spine. Make sure that your shoulder girdle, your shoulder blades are sliding down on your rib cage and not going up towards your ears. Really relax the shoulder girdle, your trapezius. Very important to relax the stress muscle a bit and have fun rolling forward, contracting your core, engaging almost every muscle in your body here. Cool, so here's our first challenge. We're gonna do a roll back and jump. Intermediate workout to the one we already had before. So you're starting in a low squat position, rolling backward, then 
pushing back with your hands, elbows up, so that you can roll back and then come back into standing and attempt to jump. Very nice. If you don't make it onto your feet, don't worry. Just roll back and forward. This is a core workout. But if you manage to get back onto your feet when you roll forward, then attempt to do this little jump here. Try to make it as smooth as possible. So really rounding your back, not landing hard on your sacrum or tailbone. So you want to bend your knees as much as possible and before you're rolling back and kind of releasing backwards, you want to be touching the ground with your glutes already. Hey, this was fun, no? Next one up, switch lunges, stepping. So you want to start with a squat and then stepping backwards into a lunge. So this is basically just lunge backwards, but we're adding a little bit of a bounce here, that's a squat, in the middle position. So for your feet, you want to stand a little bit wider than you would usually do your squats probably, as to be able to step backwards in a wide position, because that's easiest then to keep your balance. Now be aware of those arms, they're a little bit complex. They are parallel in the squat and diagonally in the lunge position. So parallel arms in the squat, runner's arms in the lunge. If this is not very intuitive for you, just do whatever arms you like. You can wiggle and wave your arms around however you like. So since we did some in the warm up, here are the squat jumps and your legs might already be burning. So after this one, they will definitely burn. So come into your squat, arms back, swing your arms forward and jump. Your arms are almost going overhand. So full range of motion of your arms here and your shoulder girdle. And this one is a great challenge for your cardio, your stamina. This gives you great capacity for strength, explosiveness in your legs. It's also a great glute workout because we're having this hip extension here. So when you're jumping, extend your hips forward and this is great for your glutes and your butt. Going down, full squat, 90 degrees, so hips on knee height and then lifting back up. Make sure your arms are working, this will help you. Great! Here's another little challenge adventure. We're going to be kneeling so as to sit on our heels and then jumping into a low squat. Not more, not less. If you can't jump, you can also step forward. We've done that in a previous video. So from kneeling, sitting onto your heels, arms back, swing them back, swing them forward powerfully and then come into low squat. Swing them back, swing them forward powerfully and then explode forward into this low squat. Try again, back into your kneeling, then explode forward little squat, back into your kneeling, explode forward into your squat. Arms have to work with you. Those arms do at least 30% of the lifting. So make sure they swing forward when you need to. Great, if you need a little rest, have one. Next one up, three step sideways drill. This is an advanced one with lifting the knee in the middle, hip height. So you go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And the middle knee, the inner knee is lifting while you're stepping. So we're having a little bit of a pulse, 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 pulse here. This is really great once you get the movement. If you don't have it, just do four steps, four steps, four steps, because I do want you to do the sideways shift. The sideways shift is great for strength in those hips, in the abductors, so the outer rotators of your hips to create strength here for running. Great. The arms, runner's arms, go diagonally to those legs. So when the knee is coming, the opposite elbow is going to the knee. Opposite elbow going to the knee. Great! We're almost halfway, so do your best. Another jumps. This time you don't need to bend your knees too much. It's almost like a jumping jack, but I'm fine if you're doing this locomotion arm. So jump out, jump in, jump out, jump in. Feet stay parallel, almost slightly turned out when you jump out, parallel when you jump in. And your arms can simply do this locomotion here. 
I wanted to experiment a little bit with the arm movements here because arm movements are super important in jumping. This helps so much. And since this cardio edition is so much about jumping, about lifting yourself up also with the strength of your shoulder girdle, I do want you to take this opportunity to experiment with your arms. Simple movement with the legs and now focus on the arms. Great. <laughs> One exercise to relax your brain, just simply skipping on the ground. We call it feet fire because you can imagine that the ground is really, really hot. So medium, mid tempo here. But of course you can go faster if you want to. Just simply skipping on the ground, knees are lifting mid height. And of course, I do want you again to focus on this arm movement. The arms and the legs go with the same rhythm, the same pace. And this will gonna create great arm strength as well. This forms very nice deltoids, shoulder muscles. And also focus on bringing those arms back because we also have deltoids in the back and we also want nicely shaped shoulders in the back, don't we? Of course we do. Beach season is coming up. There's always a beach season coming up. So here we go. Nice little lunges, 45 seconds. When you step out, do a very wide step to the side turning your foot slightly outside so the knee can stay above your feet. Knees are pointing toward the second toe approximately. And then bend forward, touching the ground with the inner hand. Inner hand is touching the ground. I do like bending forward with the upper body because then we get this extension into the whole body. And this works the glute muscles and our hamstrings. So make sure that you bend forward if you want to work your glutes and your butt and your hamstrings to shape the whole back of your body. Very nice. Step out, wide, come back in. Step out, come back in. Step out, come back in. Three more seconds. Well done. And here comes our last cardio endurance exercise, just for the fun of it. Hip hop kickbacks. We're starting in a reverse four point stance with your fingers pointing towards your feet. Now try to lift your hip upwards and then switch legs in the air and kick up. So kick back because you want to kind of kick a ball backwards. Imagine that you're a football player and there's a ball coming from behind and you want to kick it back. Kick back the ball, great. Now, make sure that your hips go up and down, up and down, up and down. When you're down, the feet are up, when the hips are up, you're changing in the air. Try that. Make sure that your elbows are slightly bent, lift your chest, bring your shoulders away from your ears and kick back. Coming up, some strength for your side body. And then we're up for stretching. So come onto your right hand and then bring your feet out into a side plank position. Feet are one uh, on the same line. And then shift and push your hips up as to stay in one line with your whole body. You can also bring one knee down or both knees down, whatever is left in the inside of you. And then bring the arm up. This is why it's called a T-stand because you're basically shaping a line T here. Make sure that your shoulders, as always, are staying away from your ears and you're pushing the crown of your head out of your shoulder girdle. Then make sure to get a bit more strength into your legs, push back from the ground. Well done, then change sides here. Bring your left hand onto the ground, your fingers are pointing forward, same direction as your nose. And then push your hips up, side plank here on your feet. Feet are on the same line. If you want to have it harder, you can also place one foot on top of another. This is a bit more challenging for your balance then. Then pick those hips up, try to stay in one line here with the whole body. Lift one arm up, try to relax the upper arm, don't contract it too much. Just making this nice little T shape with your arm. The arm can also go onto your hip or go over your ear as to pull yourself even longer and out. Keep breathing. This is your last exercise. 
side strength here for the oblique muscles of your core. Well done. Let's do some stretching out here of the legs. We've done a lot of leg work, so we're gonna be doing a very thorough leg stretch. Take a very wide stance and then shift your weight left and right. We want to be stretching the inside of your thighs here, the adductors. So you want to be lowering down onto one side as to feel the stretch in the inside of your thigh. You can also bring the arms onto the ground. So grab the ground with your hands so you have something to hold onto. If you're really tired, that is great. So your legs don't need to work that much. But if you're fine, just stay up here and change hands from one thigh onto the other. Keep breathing. Then stay upright and we're gonna do some standing quad stretch. Starting with the right leg. So balance on your left leg, then grab your right foot with either just the right hand or with both hands if you feel like it. You want to have your thighs parallel, on the same level, knees are on the same level, and now push your hips forward, contracting your glutes slightly. So you want to have that full extension here to really stretch your quadriceps. Your quadriceps is going over the hip and over the knee joint. So if you're bending those hips, if you're sitting back a little, we're not stretching the quadriceps. So push the hips forward and elongate through the whole front of your body. Open the chest, a little bit of chest stretch here. Great. And then change sides, balance on your right foot. Focus one point with your eyes and then grab your left foot very close to your ankle with either just your left hand or again with both hands. That is a nice chest opening at the same time. If you're grabbing your foot with both hands, make sure that you're not pulling the foot too much into the middle, but have the foot still on the left hand side. Grab the foot as close to the ankle as possible. And now make sure if you're having a mirror maybe, that would be great that your thighs are parallel, knees are on the same level. And now push those hips forward, create this extension through the whole front body, especially this extension through your hips. Very good. One of my fo forward fold favorite stretches for the hamstrings and the whole back line, one of my favorite bedtime stretches as well. So we're gonna be standing feet parallel and then fold forward nose to the knee, relaxing your head and your shoulders. Push the heels into the ground and then lifting your sitting bones up. So this is focusing on the hamstrings, which means we need to pull our hamstrings longer. And we can only do that by pulling the sit bones up because we cannot move the floor away and push the heels lower. So imagine that you want to create more length in your hamstrings by pulling your sitting bones up, trying to lift your tailbone up in the air and then folding forward even more. Then bend your knees, roll up, come back into standing for chest stretch. This is a tongue twister, chest stretch. So interlace your fingers behind your back, behind your sacrum, then lift those arms a few centimeters or more away from your hip. You do, however, want to keep your shoulders back. You don't want to collapse forward just with the intention of lifting your hands. I want to open the chest. That means you want to make your collarbones smile. You want to open and lift your chest, widen your shoulders, widen your collarbones. And if those hands lift a bit more in the process, that's fine. And if they don't, that's also fine. This is not a hand lifter, this is a chest opener. Very nice. Then release those arms and grab your right hand, pull it over to the left. And if you feel like it, you can even cross your right leg behind your left leg. So you're having a C shape for your whole body. We're stretching our sideline. So make sure that you're not 
collapsing forward or bending forward. You want to stay open, chest is up, everything is nice in one line as if you're in between two sheets of glass or two glass walls. And if you want to, you can even cross back your right leg behind your left to go even more into the C shape and include your outer hip into the stretch. So everything is leaning over to the left side, your arms, your upper body, and maybe even your right leg. Well done, then change sides, grabbing your left hand with your right hand and pulling everything over to the right. So now we're stretching our left side. And if you want to, you can even cross back your left leg behind your right foot. So everything is now leaning over to the right side. Make it a nice C shape. Again, make sure that you're not collapsing forward. This sometimes happens that you're also making a, sheet, a C shape forward. But we're not, we're staying in one line, really nice and long. When you're pulling your arm, make sure that you're not pulling your shoulder too much. So sh shoulders are, as always, staying away from the ear and relaxed. Well done. So now you can lie down. This is our last stretch for the hamstrings. Uh, nice to do lying down so you don't have to hold your body. So lie onto your back, then grab your right leg, either calf height, knee height, or um, thigh, whatever you can grab. Some people grab their shoelaces and start with a bent knee and extend your left leg onto the floor and then slowly stretch the upper leg. So start with a bent knee. Extend the left leg and then slowly extend the right leg by pushing the heel into the air, flexing your foot. You can play with flex and point a little bit here, pulling the leg towards you. And then release, bend the knee, change sides, grab the other leg wherever you can, thigh knee, calf or shoelaces. And then again, start with both knees bent, adjust your pelvis. You want to keep a slight curvature in your lower back. So we are training to stretch the hamstrings while still strengthening the back and not compressing the lower back. And then slowly push out your right leg, which is on the floor, and then stretch the upper leg to feel a slight tingling, a slight pull in your left leg. And then repeat, bending, stretching out, flex the foot, extend through the heel. Thank you very much for joining. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Leave me a comment if you did or for future requests for workout. And share with your loved ones if you want them to work out a bit more. Here we go. I hope you have a great day. See you all very soon. Bye.